Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to take a look at these websites where you can actually become what's known as a citizen scientist. Basically you can help research by joining a community. It's also known as Massive Multiplayer Science Experience and today we're going to take a look at some of the websites that I actually really like as well. Welcome to Wonder Math. <laughs> So there's actually two websites I'm going to kind of direct you to and these are zooniverse.org and also spacehack.org. Both of these are quite uh, different but they also have some similarity. Spacehack is essentially a collection of um, astronomy based um, projects where you can actually essentially join in and help the scientific community to kind of, you know, explore something or do something or achieve some kind of a result through your direct participation or possibly through your passive participation. Zooniverse is even more diverse in that it actually combines various uh, scientific fields. So let's actually take a look at this one first. We're going to click on get started here and you can actually even choose the discipline. There's like 46 projects currently. This number does change with time. And essentially here it's uh, anything from zoology to like animal research to um, there is obviously some astronomical research research here. Um, there's also things like um, history even like for example this one here, Emigrant City, um, uh, asks you to help transcribe uh, real estate records from a 19th and 20th century. Now before we actually click on any of these, let's actually kind of discuss what exactly is citizen science? What does it stand for? Well the easiest way to demonstrate this is to actually go onto one of these websites, possibly the one that's most uh, famous, most familiar to citizen scientists, and then just take a look at what's going on. This is a website called Galaxy Zoo. This is actually something that was recommended to me a long time ago. It's a website that started in 2008. Basically, what is Galaxy Zoo? Uh, it's essentially uh, a, classif a classification of galaxies by their shape, by their appearance, and it helps scientists kind of distribute the galaxies that we've discovered so far into certain categories. Now, why do they need to do this? Well, because there's like billions and trillions of galaxies out there and doing this by yourself as a scientist is close to impossible. So what they actually ask people to do is join the website and just for fun, go through these pictures and start classifying the galaxies. Now, for example, this is actually an actual picture from Sloan um, Telescope. And here it says, okay, can you please classify this? Um, well, what does it look like? Well, it clearly is not very smooth. It's not a star and artifact. It does have some sort of feature of a disk. Uh, could this be edge on, meaning that can it be sideways? Well, I don't think so. I think it's, it's pretty visible that this is galaxy arm here. Is there any sign of a bar feature? Yes, there's a sign of a bar feature in the middle. Spiral arm patterns. Yes, there are spiral arms. Um, how would you identify these spiral arms? Are they very tight? Are they medium or they loose? I think these are pretty tight. And how many spiral arms are there? Well, I kind of only see two. Uh, how prominent is the central bulge? It's kind of there. It, it's sort of obvious, but not dominant. And it's clearly there. Uh, is the galaxy currently emerging or is there any sign of tidal debris? Not really. And do you see any of these odd shapes? Is there a ring? Is there a lens, which is the Einstein uh, lens, meaning that this is a very, very massive object with another galaxy behind it? Is it regular? Is there something else like a blurb? Uh, is there some kind of a dust lane in the middle or is it overlapping with another one? Well, no, nothing. There's nothing here. Would you like to discuss this object? So this is actually the cool part. You can actually click yes and it will take you to the website where possibly people have started talking about this in more detail. Um, I've seen some of the discussion boards, this one doesn't seem to have any, but you can actually start a comment by basically starting to you know, classify it. And I'm gonna write one by saying, well, okay, th this one uh, looks like a typical spiral galaxy similar to Milky Way. And so there's your first comment. Uh, and it's going to go in there somewhere and then it will appear. And then you can actually have a discussion with people about this particular galaxy and there's tags in here as well that will actually tag this particular image and all of these images are classified by specific number. Now um, as you classify the first example you'll go to the next one. So what is this one? Well this is a very smooth uh, galaxy. It's almost completely round. It's not really, there's nothing really happening here. I don't know if there's anything going on in here either. I think that's it. I think that's all there is to it. I don't want to discuss it. And so as you go through this, you basically classify these. And this is kind of just done for fun. And it's actually kind of interesting. But what's interesting is that all of these are real images. And they will then be used in um, research. They'll actually be used in publication. As a matter of fact, if you go into the um, publications here, you'll see that it's 
pretty much been published several times a year like the most recent one from like 2016 and this one here is from 48,000 different galaxies that were classified by people like you and essentially me um and it, it's quite an impressive project so this is galaxy zoo and it's kind of kind of fun but there's a lot of other ones like for example if you go to space hack there's anything from like mars which i'll take a look at in a second to black hole classification to sunspots to basically earth and cities at night um stardust at home this is exploring various stardust in our galaxy uh, galaxy zoo is right there as well uh there's a lot of other ones i haven't even heard of there's one called planet hunters which i've taken a look at previously in one of the previous videos uh there's even uh, some passive ones where you don't actually have to do anything but install a piece of software like this one right here einstein at home asks you to install a little software that will actually run just a part of your um, cpu when you're not using your computer and this will analyze space time in our in our galaxy and help scientists discover various um uh, relativity effects uh, there's things like comet research there is i don't actually know what this is this sounds pretty cool you can take a look at this yourself and find out what it is uh, there's rovers there's set at home this is a famous one that's sort of looking for uh extraterrestrial signals in our um in our solar system and there's obviously comets and planetary disks uh so this is a space hack it does have quite a lot of re really cool information but so here's the martian one planet four kind of uh, there's a bit of a description there and you can kind of log in takes you to the website tells you that there's 136,000 participants over 5 million images have been classified and this is essentially classification of um martian surface it kind of gives you the tutorial so it's kind of like a mini game it gives you a tutorial on what to do and basically it's asking you to um like you can actually take a look at examples it's asking you to classify these features to basically put a shape around the features that you see so like right here we see what i guess this is kind of like this ish maybe a right that and this is more of a blotch thingy and then maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller and so here we go we'll just classified features and that's it finish boom and it shows you the next feature and so you basically go through these uh um one by one and you kind of help scientists classify these to map the entire surface of mars and these are actual pictures of mars meaning that your actual work will actually be used in future science and if you want to actually get credited you can sign in and make an account uh, but I personally just love helping because it's kind of fun. It's it's like a mini game and it's definitely gives you a lot of sort of happy feeling on the inside knowing that you actually are helping the future of human race and basically everything you do will actually kind of contribute to science in some uh, pretty much direct way. So there's, there's a lot of these projects and there's so many to explore. Galaxy Zoo is a really cool to start with. Um, Planet Hunters is also another one that I've uh, previously discussed and it's right here. It's basically classifying various uh stars by looking at these various graphs and just by trying to find exoplanets around stars by essentially looking at these patterns right here so this is essentially um a blockage of the starlight by something that passed in front of it and so there's so many different cool things here you can explore and the website like zooniverse.org will actually allow you to choose specific fields. So like, let's just say you're really really into biology you want to do more biological research so right here this project is called Focus on Wildlife, Cleveland Metro Parks, and it's it's a pretty interesting project, uh, specifically for Cleveland, of course, but it actually is fun to do anyway. So basically, you're entering urban wild um, and trying to discover the creatures that live uh, in essentially in Cleveland, in uh, nearby the city. So the way this works is you're going to be identifying different species based on the pictures that you see and there's quite a lot of photos that were taken around cleveland right here and it doesn't really even matter if you live in ohio or not but it's still fun to kind of uh look at these and so here's how it works you basically have this picture you can play it so you can see the motion and there, there's the animal right there look at that there's the animal and that's i think it's a squirrel maybe a chipmunk but i think it's a squirrel i don't know what color it is but it looks like it's maybe a red squirrel is this yeah i think it's a red squirrel and uh, we're gonna go for that uh this is what the red squirrel looks like and i'm just going to take a guess and i think there's one in there identify and done next picture and this is actually kind of fun it's it's a mini game it's it's super super fun i've done this for like hours and hours trying to find animals sometimes you don't even see them like right now i don't even know if there's anything here i don't think there's anything if there's nothing you just say nothing here maybe a false picture false alarm uh so we're going to go for that done next 
Let's find something cool. This is a night scene. Let's see who comes at night. Oh, look at that. What is that? All right. So that's that's definitely either a fox or a wolf. Maybe a coyote. It's really hard to tell, though. There's eyes in there. This, and this is actually kind of terrifying. If I saw this at night, I would be so scared. I would probably run away. I'm going to go for a coyote, probably, uh, because I don't exactly know um, what I'm looking at. But uh, it will be for them to figure out. Um, once I identify this, I should have actually reported this photo because it wasn't very clear. Uh, and so you kind of keep going through these, discovering new animals, looking for new stuff. And sometimes you'll see some really, really cool picture. Um, like maybe, let, let's just actually go through some of these. Maybe we'll find something amazing. Uh, I think it's another night shot. And this is a deer. Look at that. There's a head of a deer right there. And so we're going to go for the deer. And there we go. It's I don't know if it's young or not, but oh, no, there's no young here. Uh, it's maybe an adult antler deer. And I think it's just kind of standing. I think it's just standing. So there we go. And you know what? This is like for me, this is super enjoyable. Like it's almost like a puzzle that you're trying to solve. You're trying to find what's inside like a squirrel right here again. And then you're trying to take a look at it and identify it. So that's essentially how citizen science um, works. You basically join these communities of scientists with actual research going on with various different um, areas. Uh, and uh, a lot of these if, uh, either are, are scientific or history based or language based. Uh, there's even literature, medicine, and of course, space sciences. My favorite space sciences, uh, space sciences are right here. And um, this is actually not even everything. There's so many, so many more. But I did kind of mention the big ones, the more important ones and the more popular ones. Like, for example, Galaxy Zoo is probably number one. And if you do enjoy these, definitely join in, definitely try them. I'm posting the links for both um, Space Hack and Zooniverse in the description below. So check them out. You might find something that interests you and then you'll become a citizen scientist and learn something really cool. And that's all I wanted to say in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching uh, scientific videos, video game videos, or who just enjoys learning stuff that's cool. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. And if you would like to support this channel Patreon, click on the Patreon link below and check it out as well. I'll see you in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye-bye.